Sherlock Holmes is a fictional genius, but some of his techniques are real and you can learn how to use them. Welcome to another episode of Here's Something Interesting. If you've watched BBC's Sherlock Holmes TV show, then you're probably familiar with Sherlock's memory palace technique. This technique may seem like something that's ridiculous or something out of science fiction, but it's actually real. It's a technique that was invented by a Greek poet named Simonides in 5th century BC. He was in a grand banquet hall when he was called out in order to meet with somebody, and the moment he walked out, the entire banquet hall collapsed, killing everyone inside. After this happened, people realized they didn't remember who was inside the building and who perished in the collapse. Simonides closed his eyes, and he figured out that he could actually picture in his mind the banquet hall, who was in there, and where every person was seated. The Memory Palace is a technique that allows you to remember things more easily, whether that's numbers, or lists, or names, or something that you read. It could be anything. So here's how it works. Picture a location in your mind. It needs to be a location you're familiar with. It could be the inside of a building, an office, a room, a cabinet, a street you're familiar with. Really, it could be anything. As long as you can picture yourself mentally walking through this location, it will work. Take whatever it is that you need to remember and convert it into a memorable image, and then place each of those images in various locations around your palace. The more grotesque or the funnier an image can be, the more likely you are to remember it. So go ahead and feel free to get ridiculous. If you can activate other senses beyond just imagery, it'll help you even more. So once you form an image, think of how it looks, think of how it might feel or taste or smell. All those different things will help you remember it. So why does this work? Well, it turns out our brains are better at remembering certain kinds of information. We're much better at imagery than we are at numbers. So for example, if I gave you a random number like 143274482994, it would probably be pretty hard to remember that. But if I gave you a really vivid image like purple gnomes, smoking cigars, and jumping on trampolines, that would be a lot easier for you to remember. And this is what your images should look like. Take something and make it ridiculous or outlandish or gross or weird or funny, and that will help you remember it. I learned about this technique in a book called Moonwalking with Einstein by Joshua Four. One of the people in his book explains in thorough detail exactly how to use this technique. He gives you this ridiculous to-do list that you need to remember. He walks you through the steps of how to convert each of these things on the to-do list into images and place them inside a memory palace. It's been about two weeks since I read that section of the book. However, I'm going to see right now if I can walk through my memory palace and remember each of the items that were on that list. Closing my eyes and getting in my memory palace, and here we go. Pickled garlic, cottage cheese, peat smoked salmon, six bottles of white wine, three pairs of socks, three hula hoops, a snorkel, dry ice machine, email Sophia, a skin-toned cat suit, Paul Newman film, elk sausages, director's chair and megaphone, harness and ropes, and a barometer. There you go, I was able to use the memory palace technique and remember a really stupid to-do list from a couple weeks ago. This is a technique you can use in your everyday life to remember things like people's names or phone numbers, addresses, to-do lists, or anything else. Obviously, the majority of people have smartphones that can remember all this information for you. But the whole idea is to flex your memory muscle in order to get better at remembering things. And this stuff goes way beyond practical. In fact, there are US and world memory championships that they hold. People train and go to ridiculous lengths to remember the most insane stuff. Like, I don't know, for example, trying to memorize a deck of cards in less than 30 seconds. Or memorizing pi out to more than 20,000 digits. Competitors in these contests use a lot of different techniques beyond just the memory palace. They have things like the person action object system and the major system and some other stuff. There you go. Now you have the techniques to tap into your inner Sherlock Holmes and develop your own memory superpowers. That's all for this week's episode. I upload new videos every Thursday, so if you like this one and you want to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right here. And if you'd like to watch more of my videos right now, go ahead and hit the button right down here. Thank you for watching, and as always, be like Sherlock Holmes and stay curious.